Ahoy, everyone. This is David Perry with my continuing series of interviews with clients, colleagues, artists around the world, and how we get from the great pause of this year, 2020, into the great return. And I'm delighted to be speaking with a photographer whose work is featured in the new book from Ginkgo Press, Queer Photography, Focus on the Margins. Please welcome Michael Sharkey. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You know, I've, I've known of your work for uh, several years and read a wonderful piece in the New York Times about the documentary that uh, you contributed to about queer youth. Talk to me about how documenting young members of the LGBTQ community became, well, more than a niche for you, uh, a passion. And what have you learned about the community through that work? Um, well, let's see. The project began in the spring of 2006. Um, so it's been over 14 years now. Um, and, you know, it's gone through various iterations and moments of um, intensity um, and also reflection. Um, it really came about at the sort of beginning of my editorial career as a portrait photographer. And um, as you may or may not know, photographers and especially portrait photographers, um, you know, work intermittently. And, and so there's a lot of downtime to sort of develop one's artistic style and uh, perhaps other creative interests. Um, and at that point in my career, I felt a need and a desire to sort of embark upon a long-term project that would be a sort of um, vehicle for me to explore different ways of, of photographic uh, portraiture. Um, and also to just give myself an opportunity to be my own boss and really make make all of those creative decisions myself um, instead of with the sort of collaborative help that you would normally experience with an editor or an art director um, and really sort of focus in on, on, the, on, the, on the style and the type of approach to a subject that was of most interest to me at the time. Um, and so that's kind of, you know, I, I, as in terms of the subject, you know, as a, as a queer man, um, it was a natural affinity. Um, and it kind of, you know, it wasn't even like, Hmm, what kind of project should I do? It, you know, it just was very clear and, and obvious to me that, that this would be an interesting, uh, subject to pursue. And I, I grew up in the eighties, um, and it was a very different time for young gay people. And so I kind of wanted to, to see what it was like for, for the queer youth of today, um, what it meant, um, how they sort of identified and defined themselves and what their sort of social um, outlook and prospects were both in the community, let's say at school, but also at home. Um, I didn't really come out to my family until I was a, a, you know, around 20 years of age. And these kids were coming out much, much earlier. Um, in terms of the, I think the second part of the question was, what have I learned? So, you know, fortuitously, the project began at a moment of just incredible um, transition in terms of, social norms, um, institutional policy, um, you know, legal legislation, all of this kind of stuff was happening. And within a 10 year period of time, I would say, it was, it was something I could not anticipate, but it was a completely different, um, demographic and group of people that I was sort of confronting um, in the project. 
So something that had originally began documenting the sort of the, the budding sexuality of young people and how they sort of identified and, and related to, to people of the same sex eventually became almost exclusively about gender and the way that gender is perceived and, um, and also expressed. Um, and now I would say we're, we're sort of nearing another sort of transition or episode in the evolution of LGBTQ um, activism and, and culture. Um, and I, I don't wanna to try to define it. I feel like the sort of the best thing to do is really just to experience it. You know, I've always thought of the project as um, a documentary project that I was bringing a very strong creative vision to, but sort of for me, the value of the project is in its, in its documenting of a particular time and place and people. So I really do sort of think of it as, um, a document and, and perhaps it's an exceptional document. And if you want to call it art, great. Um, but I, but I do think of it as portraiture and I do think of it as a, as a document. Um, so you see yourself as in a very real way as a photojournalist. I guess so. I mean, I wouldn't, I would hesitate to, to venture into the realm of reportage because journalism has its own set of ethics. Um, and and I, I like to sort of not be constrained by those types of um, ethical concerns, which are very real and should be acknowledged and, and upheld. Um, but I kind of would like to exist maybe tangentially to that. Um, and I don't, I don't think of myself as a journalist. Um, I think of myself as a portraitist and over the years I found ways to, to make portraits of people in a variety of different ways and a variety of different mediums. Um, and it's, you know, that's part of an evolution for me as well. You know, there is, there's a wonderful innocent sensuality about your work, seeing these, these young people on the, on the cusp of, of adulthood. You said you started this project in 2006. Are there any young people, well, then young people <laughs> that are now young adults 14 years later that you're still in touch with or, or still follow? Or have you ever thought about that first group of people that you photographed in 2006 now photographing in 2020 or 2021? Absolutely. I mean, I, the first question, yes, I am still quite close with a number of my subjects and have stayed in, in very close contact with them and see some of them regularly. Um, and uh, that's mostly through social media, um, but also the ones that happen to live in Brooklyn, come visit me at the studio in Red Hook. Um, I've continued to photograph them over the years. Um, there certainly are particular subjects from images that have now become sort of iconographic, at least within the at least within the confines of the project itself, um, that I that I often think of and and wonder about. Um, and I think perhaps one day I will return and and. Uh, and visit them again, or perhaps they'll come and find me and visit me, I don't know. What was it like working with uh, Benjamin Wahlberg's on this project, queer photography, new queer photography, focus on the margins, and how did you come to be one of the artists he selected? You know, I couldn't tell you specifically how he discovered my work. I don't think I've ever learned that. I've also never spoken to Benjamin. Um, we've only had um, an epistolary correspondence via email. Um, so what I can tell you from, from that um, is that he, you know, he's always expressed an incredible amount of enthusiasm and uh, respect 
for the work and interest and curiosity. Um, and it, clearly he has a lot of determination and energy because to realize a project like this that um, is maybe not the easiest sell in the world, um, you know, takes quite a bit of, of fortitude. Um, I hope someday our paths do cross and that we get to meet each other. Have you seen now the complete book that it's out with the other 50 some artists in there? I have only seen a digital PDF of the book um, in its entirety, which I have gone through uh, a few times and I, I'm you know, totally blown away by the quality of work in there and humbled to be in such, such great company. Um, the books that I have ordered, the, the actual volumes have not arrived yet, but I, I anticipate them coming sometime soon. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about how you would define the secondary title of the book, Focus on the Margins. What, what to you are the margins that your work covers? I mean, I guess, you know, li literally speaking, you're talking about groups of people that have been uh, pushed to the margin or have um, made a conscious choice to remain in the margins. Um, and, you know, these are minority groups. Um, and then within the sort of umbrella of, of the LGBTQ community, um, there's an infinite number of sort of like-minded communities and groups of people that find each other and, and congregate. Um, you know, and I think that that's wonderful. That's one of the, maybe one of the, the very few things that uh, the internet has been able to provide us with that that's positive <laughs> is the ability to search out and find people who, who share your, your values and your interests. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that that's what I would. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to hear your, your comments on the internet. It's, uh, it, uh, I mean, you certainly wouldn't describe yourself as a, a Luddite, I'm sure, but I find it interesting that you said there was the one good thing to come of the internet. And when you look at your pictures, which are beautiful and, and painterly, there is a quote unquote, old fashioned uh, patina to them. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. What is the, the tone you would like your photos to uh, uh, impact people with? Well, in 2006, I was still shooting analog film. And so there's a very um, recognizable and intrinsic aesthetic quality that the film possesses. Um, digital, like with all sort of the evolution of mediums, digital was trying to sort of replicate those analog qualities. And eventually it, it's grown into its own form with its own characteristics that are recognizable and, and can be manipulated and sort of celebrated. Um, but I think what you're recognizing isn't so much the, the sort of aesthetic quality, but, but the way that I approach my subject. Yes. Which is a kind of maybe, hmm, I don't know if I've ever actually tried to articulate this, but it's, I'm not gonna say that it's tra a traditional approach, but it's a kind of formal approach to the subject. Um, so I want to be like fully engaged and I want the resulting portrait to convey that engagement um, so that the viewer can feel a sense of intimacy and a sense of connection to the subject. Um, so I think, I think that that's probably what you're, what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think that that will really ever go away in the way that I approach subjects. 
I mean, I, I love um, a, a sort of American vernacular, or maybe not even American, but a sort of contemporary vernacular that you achieve with all of the, the sort of iterations of photographic technique. I don't want to transcend that in any way. I want you to look at my image and be like, hmm, that looks like it was made in mm -hmm. the early 2000s. I want you to sort of locate it in a, in a place in history and for it to, that to sort of come through. Um, you know, I, I also take a million other different types of photographs, lots of snapshots. I make still lifes. Um, that's a different style of, of photography. But when it comes to portraiture, I, I, I do think I have a, a, a more, for lack of a better word, formal approach. Last question for you. When you were the age of some of your subjects, and they, of course, the, the subject of this interview, would you have been one of those gay kids that would have been photographed or allowed himself to be photographed? In the mid eighties, no. Um, but if I had been a teenager in the you know early two thousands, I think yes, I think I would. Um, and I think this is true of most young people that they they come to a place in their self awareness and their understanding of themselves that they want to present something to the world and they want to be seen and they want to be understood. Um, so I think that that's a kind of almost universal desire that, that young people have. Um, and, you know, queer kids really at its heart is, is a project that, that just allows these kids to express who they are. Um, and I try to, to bring a little bit of, um, you know, what is the word, um, magic to the way that they present themselves. Um, We've been speaking with Michael Sharking, known for his photographic work documenting queer youth, and one of the more than 50 photographers featured in the new book from Ginkgo Press, New Queer Photography, Focus on the Margins. Michael, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you for your beautiful work. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much, David. Ahoy. See you later. 